Oxazolidinones are protein synthesis inhibitors and represent a relatively newer class of antibiotics. Linezolid is the first drug of this class. Linezolid is followed by a relatively new antibiotic, Tedizolid, that was approved by the FDA in 2014. As a class, oxazolidinones act primarily against gram-positive organisms. We'll dive into the exact spectrum a bit later in the video. Proteins are essential for all cells to function and survive. Ribosomes play an essential role in the translation of mRNA into proteins. Bacterial ribosomes are different than human ribosomes, as bacterial and human ribosomes contain different ribosomal subunits. Protein synthesis inhibitors take advantage of this difference. Bacterial ribosomes are made up of a 70S particle consisting of a 50S large and 30S small subunit. Specifically, oxazolidinones bind to the peptidyl site, or P site, on the 50S ribosomal subunit. This binding prevents the initiation of protein synthesis by preventing the formation of the ribosomal N-formal methionine, or FMET, tRNA complex. You'll recall that AUG is the start codon in protein synthesis. Without the proper formation of the ribosomal FMET tRNA complex, Protein synthesis cannot be initiated. Oxazolidinones are primarily bacteriostatic. However, oxazolidinones are bactericidal against streptococci. Resistance to oxazolidinones is primarily due to point mutations on the 23S rRNA that makes up the oxazolidinone binding site on the 50S ribosomal subunit. Ribosomal RNA is pretty redundant and it takes mutations on two or more 23S rRNAs to confer oxazolidinone resistance. Other mechanisms of resistance include a methyltransferase that can modify the ribosome and alter oxazolidinone binding. The concerning bit about this mechanism of resistance is that it is transferable between bacteria. Resistance to linezolid is low in susceptible bacteria. Despite this low resistance, some enterococci are beginning to show signs of resistance to linezolid. There is not much data surrounding resistance to tedizolid, but some reports suggest that linezolid resistant strains would be sensitive to tedizolid treatment. As I mentioned previously, the oxazolidinones are active against a large majority of gram-positive bacteria, including enterococci, streptococci, staphylococci, gram-positive anaerobic cocci, and gram-positive rods such as L. monocytogenes, corinibacterium species, and nocardia species. Oxazolidinones have poor coverage of gram-negative bacteria. The unique mechanism of action of the oxazolidinones gives the oxazolidinones activity in bacteria that have acquired resistance to other antibiotics, including vancomycin-resistant strains of enterococci, penicillin-resistant strains of S. pneumoniae, and methicillin-resistant slash vancomycin-resistant strains of staphylococci, for example, MRSA. The adverse effects of oxazolidinones can be divided into three different categories, myelosuppression, mitochondrial toxicity, and drug-drug interactions. Myelosuppression, and most commonly thrombocytopenia, has been reported in patients receiving linezolid with a typical onset of 7 to 10 days after treatment is initiated. This adverse effect is reversible after discontinuation of linezolid. Platelet counts should be considered for patients that have pre-existing thrombocytopenia or in patients that will undergo long-term treatment greater than two weeks with linezolid. Based on early clinical data with tedizolid, it seems that tedizolid may have less of a propensity to elicit thrombocytopenia when compared to linezolid, according to a 2007 study in pharmacotherapy by Narita et al. Lactic acidosis optic neuritis, and peripheral neuropathy can develop in patients receiving linezolid. These toxicities appear after long treatments with linezolid, greater than six weeks, and these toxicities are believed to be the result of an inhibition of mitochondrial protein synthesis. Due to this toxicity, linezolid should generally not be used for long-term treatment if there is an alternative agent available. It is unknown how tedizolid affects mitochondrial protein synthesis. In addition to its antibacterial action, linezolid is a weak, nonspecific inhibitor of monoamine oxidase, or MAO. 
the nonspecific inhibition of MAO sets the stage for potential drug-drug interactions with other adrenergic or serotonergic agents, including the antidepressant selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. Co-administration of linezolid with one of these agents can lead to serotonin syndrome, which is potentially life-threatening and can manifest as a headache, palpitations, or a hypertensive crisis. Co-administration should be avoided. The potential interaction with tetizolid is unknown. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.